welcome back to the channel. My name is Josiah and uh, it's, it's been a little bit. Uh, it's been a little while since I've uploaded a video again. Uh, I'm sorry, this keeps happening. It's like two weeks in a row. I... Anyway, um, there, was just, there was just a whole bunch of stuff that happened. There was a really big thing I was working on. Uh, it's a personal family matter. Uh, it was really, it was like a video I was editing and um, it was just something that I uh, really kind of dedicated myself to last week. So I didn't get to making a video last week. Not to worry, this week I am and hopefully we can get back on regular schedules, but who knows. Um, today though, uh, there's there's no performance for the trick I'm gonna be teaching you guys today because uh, this is a trick that requires uh, misdirection. Now, I've talked about misdirection here on the channel. Uh, and the reason I haven't shared too much with it since I talked about it and I don't remember what video I talked about it in, but um, anyway, I talked about misdirection in the past video. Uh, and I'll, I'll go through and I'll find that video and put links to it in the description. But um, the reason I haven't taught much too much with it is because I'm really trying to focus on a lot of the uh, beginner stuff. I'm trying to focus on uh, the stuff that you really need to start out with, the different kinds of tricks and things that are best to start out with. Uh, so today we're going to be moving on a little bit. We're going to get back into uh, some more of the advanced stuff. Um, this is an intermediate trick. Uh, I'm going to say lower level intermediate. This is probably like it's not necessarily a beginner effect due to the amount of misdirection is, that's required for it, um, but it is, uh, it's definitely not like the hardest intermediate effect you're going to It's one of the easier intermediate tricks, that's what I'm trying to say. So a while back on the channel, I taught the classic palm, and essentially the classic palm is just when you, um, uh, it's, it's a way to secretly hold a card in your hand without your spectator knowing. And I taught the classic palm, and since then I haven't really done anything with it at all. So today I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do a trick with it. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm really excited for this tutorial. So uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. All right, in this video we're going to be using the uh, Red Monarchs, which is one of my favorite decks of cards. Well, as I've said before, the Monarchs are some of my favorite cards. These red ones are really cool because the box is very unique, has a different finish than all the others, but. Anyway, let's just get into the trick. So, essentially, this is going to be a trick that's rare because it involves the card box. Now, I've mentioned this before in a my Vital Deck Switch video, but I always love it when card tricks or card magic effects or magic effects in general uh, use things that you wouldn't ordinarily use in a trick. For instance, a box. Now. When I taught the deck switch, it taught it using the box as the uh, as the part of the method, uh, not necessarily part of the actual performance of the spectator. <laughs> this trick is going to be different. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, but this trick is going to be different because it uses the box in the performance for the spectator, but it actually doesn't really have any purpose except for as a placeholder. Okay, so essentially this is called the card uh, card under box trick. So it's essentially uh, a card, the spectator selects a card, and then that card appears magically underneath the card box. It's a pretty cool little teleportation effect. Um, so I'm going to be showing you a few methods today for it, um, two of which are ways that uh, use uh, the classic palm to do this trick, and I'm going to show you one way that does not use any card palming, and uh, that's going to be really cool. So. Uh, and there's going to be uh, one more fourth method. I forgot to mention that real quick. Um, uh, it's going to be a fourth method that uses the gambler's cup, which is something we talked about in a previous video. Uh, I think actually the last video we did I talked about it. Yeah, I'm going to show you one method using that too. Okay, so let's just get into the first method. The first method is the intermediate method. Okay, the really kind of like intermediate method, like the one that's going to... What I mean by it is it's probably the most advanced method, I guess I should say. That was kind of a weird way of saying it, but anyway. You begin by having Spectator select a card, and you're going to control that card at the top using whatever method you prefer. I've taught some on the channel before. Uh, you can go look those on my, up on my channel if you don't know them yet. Uh, so I'll leave, obviously I'll leave links in the description, that kind of thing. But anyway, you just have a Spectator select a card, uh, and uh, you can just control it any way you'd like. Like I've taught, uh, like I've taught um, uh, Hindu Cuff Shuffle Control. I gotta put these on the bottom. Uh, or you could also control their card using um, just like a basic double undercut. I've taught several ways, easy ways you can control a card on this channel. And there are plenty of other ways you can find all over YouTube uh, how to control cards. But you just control their card to the top. Okay. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to want to palm that card off. Or uh, So again, I've taught, I, um, I've mentioned classic palming several times. I'll leave a link to that video down below again. Leave a link down below to all the videos I'm mentioning. Uh, and when you classic palm, you can classic palm in any method that you prefer. Uh, just get it into that classic palm position, okay? So you can just use a basic two-handed palm if you want. Anyway, you just got to get it into palm, okay? So anyway, once you get it into palm, like right here, okay, you can, you can set the deck down. And what you're going to do is you're going to be talking to your spectator because what you're going to do is uh, it's, it's kind of... You're basically going to have a box here and you're just going to do this, okay? I know this seems kind of weird, but what you're going to do is you're going to be talking to your spectator. This is where misdirection comes in. That's right, drop the card. You're going to be talking to your spectator and what you're doing is uh, you're just kind of talking to them. You're saying, okay, you know, actually go ahead and shuffle these, okay? And that's your justification for setting this aside, okay? You're just going to, you can have it in a palm and you're just gonna have them shuffle. And this is a really great subtlety if you wanna make sure you know people don't have, a, if you wanna make sure people think you don't have a card in your hand, is you make this overhand shuffle motion with the back of your hand facing out. This looks like a super, it just looks like you're showing them how like you want them to shuffle like this, okay? And it's super great because they don't know that you have a card secretly in palm, okay? Then, when you're ready to do the trick, you're gonna come up, you're still talking, and you're gonna grab the box as with the hand that's being how's the card palmed as you're still talking. You're just going to release, you're just basically just releasing with your pinky finger the pressure, and the pressure from when you're palming will just release that card, it'll drop onto the table, and at this point you're going to lift the box and bring it back. And that's when you look down, and as you look down you say, look, your card appears underneath the box. And what that looks like to people, it looks like you lifted up the box and are setting it down here. It looks like you're right here in this motion, okay? So that's what that's where the misdirection portion of it comes in. So. That's basically all there is to the first version. Again, you have a spectator select a card. You control it to the top, any fashion that you'd like. You palm it off so that it's in palm. The card to box is, of course, over here. You come here, you're still talking, looking up at them. Sorry, I moved the camera a tiny bit. Let me... Yeah, we're good. So you're still talking to them, and and you say again, and, and look, and then as you're talking, you say, uh, and you say, and wouldn't it be cool if your card appeared underneath the card box, okay? And it's really, and you're looking down. Like, you can't see my face while I'm teaching this, but you want to make sure you're looking at them and talking to them while you're coming over here with the palmed card. And then as you're lifting up the box, you look down and it looks like you're lifting the box, card box up off the card, okay? That's version number one. All right, version number two. This is the version I probably perform a lot better for me personally. It just fits my personal style better. Because this version, that version was pretty good. And as cool as it is to do, and it, as good as it feels to do that version, what I don't like is that you have to, is that the spectator doesn't get to see it, the card box being lifted up. And they, or they don't get to lift it up themselves even. So this version of it is very similar. Again, you could just control a card to the top or whatever position you want to palm it from, but I've taught, taught palms on this channel, you get it into palm. But this time, you're going to hand the card box off to them, and what you're going to do is you're going to, is you're going to hand off to them. And what you're going to do, this is basically, it's basically you're just moving the card box. That's the justification for the action. You're handing this off to them, and you're just kind of moving the card box out of the way, okay? So what you're doing, you're basically doing the same thing, except for the moment doesn't happen like this, you're still lifting, you're still setting the cards down and lifting the card box up. But this time when you do it, you're looking at them the entire time. You're just loading it underneath the card box. You're just handing this to them and you're just casually kind of adjusting that, okay? And they take it, they shuffle it, and then I snap my fingers and they can see it's under here. And you don't have to worry about uh, getting it perfect. You don't have to worry about getting the card box to cover it entirely perfect. I like to have it kind of peek out a tiny bit anyway. And I just, I just set this off to the side, I don't bring attention to it until after they're done, I say, you can see one card appears underneath the card box and it's your card. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's basically how that one works. It's the same thing. You're just, you have a card in palm, you set it down, you're going to lift up the card box, but this time instead of bringing it over and revealing the card there, you're just going to set the card box right on top. And you're going to have this off to the side somewhere where it doesn't really draw any attention. All right, so now that we've gotten past, past the two classic palm versions, we're going to do uh, the third version. We're going to learn the gambler's cop version now. 
So again, if you don't know what the Gambler's Cup is, I'll leave a link to the same video I left a link to last week um, that teaches the Gambler's Cup in pretty good detail. It's probably one of the best videos out there on YouTube teaching the Gambler's Cup. I kind of figured out the Gambler's Cup on my own. I never really watched an official tutorial for it, but I did look at that tutorial and I thought, you know, this is a really great one to go to. Uh, so anyway, again, it's basically just another palm, but it's like this. So the way that one works is you're going to control a card, but instead of controlling it to the top, you're going to control it to the bottom. And the way you control a card to the bottom, you can do literally any of the controls you've already learned from my channel or uh, anywhere really. But this time, instead of getting your pinky break above the spectator selected card like you normally would, you're just gonna get it beneath. That's all you have to do for that, okay? So uh, you just get it underneath and that's all you have to do. So the way you would do that is, let's say you wanna do just a standard double undercut. You're gonna turn it over like this, you're gonna turn it back over, and as you're putting the cards back, you just kind of push off the card, get a pinky break. Now your pinky break's underneath their card instead of being on top of it, so you can do a double undercut, just like normal, and control it to the bottom like that. Another option with which you could control the card is um, uh, if you wanna do the Hindu shuffle control like I've taught. In order to do it with the Hindu shuffle control, it's a little bit different because you have to do the Hindu from, uh, you kind of have to do, uh, you have to have your break underneath it and you have to do your Hindu from the bottom of the deck instead of the top to get to the bottom. It's kind of weird, but no worries. Finally, you can do any top control you'd like. Let's say you've controlled a card to the top, okay? Not like that, but in a way that's actually you know, card control. You can do an overhand shuffle where you turn it, you do an overhand shuffle, but this time, you, but instead of doing a, like, chunk, drawing off a chunk of cards at first, you're just gonna draw off a single card. And that controls it to the bottom, okay? So you control it to the bottom, you get it into, you get your break, you get it into a gambler's cop, and you set the cards aside, you have the spectator shuffle, whatever you wanna do to do your misdirection, which I've talked about on the channel. And all you have to do is you have to have a justification for moving the card box. So oftentimes what I'll do, I'll set the card box up here. I'm gonna hand it to the spectator here. So what I do is I kind of, is I kind of just come here and I kind of grab this, okay? You just have to bring the card box into your hand momentarily. And basically you're just gonna load this underneath and bring it over here. So it's kind of a weird thing to do. I, you don't normally do that. But if you have people shuffle while the people are distracted, you can just kind of set it over here. And that's how you load it underneath. That's all there is to it. I don't really have much to say else uh, wise about that. That's pretty much it. You just make sure you use your misdirection. All right, and now the final version, the fourth version, this is the version that does not use any palms. It happens with the deck in your hand. So again, you control a card to the top. So in this case, the four clubs. What you do is you're gonna get a pinky break underneath it, just like this. Okay, you get a pinky break and you're gonna come over the top of it and you're going to set the card box just under, you're gonna set the card box on top of the deck momentarily. And it's kind of, well, this is another weird thing to do. You have to find a justification for that. So the justification for putting the card box here is, um, let's say you were, uh, let's say you're moving something. So you have something set here, like let's say you have a Sharpie from a previous trick. So let's say you do this trick, you have the spectator sign the card, or you know you do a previous trick and the spectator signs the card. The Sharpie setting, the Sharpie is here, you set the card box in your hand and you say, and you come back over here. That's one way to do it. It's just kind of, you just kind of have to bring it together momentarily. Another thought is you're just going to um, put the card box here. Uh, and, and the reason you have to move an object is because you need this hand. The justification, basically, I didn't explain that, is this hand, this hand needs to do something. So you have to move the card box over to this hand. You do your something and then you set the card box down, okay? And that's pretty cool. You just set your pinky break, and again, you just grab from the pinky break, and it has, and you're just basically taking the card with it as you set it aside. And that's basically all you have to do to do that version of it. And at that point, you just, at the end, you make a magical gesture, you bring their attention to the card box, and you reveal it as usual. All right, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this, so uh, let's just head to the outro. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. A little bonus tip for you, that last version of it, if you wanna know, 
with a little bit of variation on it. That's actually a card to wallet trick too, a way to make a card teleport into a wallet. Maybe you know that trick, maybe you don't. Uh, maybe you can figure it out, I don't know. Just, just a little hint for you. Uh, maybe I'll teach that eventually, but for now, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't really have much else to say. We'll see you in the next video.